Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this special edition of Half Faith, Let It Begin. My name is Angel Santana, and you know, we've been on the air since 2018. That's right, June 16, 2018. The show designed for a daily commuter went live. It's a weekly show all about faith. A show with motivational topics, inspirational stories, and personal testimony set out to change the world. Well, none of this could be possible without one individual, my mom. My mother is my best friend. My mom is the person that gave birth to me. My mom presented me to the Lord. My mom has introduced me to the Lord. And I have been blessed to be her son for 45 years. With that being said, I am also honored and blessed to have a wife who is my the mother of my children. My wife continues to inspire me each and every day. She strengthens me, and I, I hope to say I can strengthen her on the good days and the bad. So today, we're going to air uh, a message that I did a couple years ago that actually put us on the map, because Ellen DeGeneres, Oprah Winfrey, all liked this episode. And it is called A Mother's Love. So may God be with you all. May he shine his light upon you and grant each and every single one of you peace on earth. Happy Mother's Day weekend. And I hope you will enjoy this message. And never forget, have faith, let it begin. And it starts right now. Have faith, let it begin. Hello everyone, and my name is Angel. Before I begin, this particular episode, I would like to dedicate, so I dedicate this message to my mom. My mom went to church and presented me to the Lord. It was her dream that I was able to preach and do what I do now in spreading the word. And I'm forever grateful for her love and support. I ask all of you to just believe in your parents because my mom envisioned and believed that one day I'd be doing this. So hugs to her and hugs to every mom out there um, who believe in their children because this episode is entitled Mother's Day is Every Day. Today I want to just welcome every single mom to this channel every single parent to this channel. I would like to honor all mothers who have gone to be with the Lord and are watching down on all of us each and every day. Let's begin with the definition of the word mother. In the dictionary, it says a mother is a woman in a relation to a child or children to whom she has given birth to. Pretty straightforward, wouldn't you agree? It's not a flattering, though, or honorable definition. Always believe that. See, today, we're going to actually rewrite the definition. And we're going to set this record straight. See, together, we're going to use scripture and examples of just how important it is to be a mother. And I'm going to do it from a child's point of view. So let's face facts. Mothers have an incredible job. It is a job of no pay. No position in the business world compares to the physical, emotional, and spiritual commitment when it comes to motherhood. A mother doesn't take a course or preliminary test on how to prepare for such an important role. In the Bible, it says, May your father and mother rejoice. May she who gave you birth be joyful. A mother's job begins from the moment we are born. She is the first person who ever touched you. She kept us in her womb for months. And when we came out, her first priority was to hold you. And then she cuddled with you. She stroked your head. She rubbed your feet. She held your little cheeks against hers. She gave you a finger to grasp. She changed your diapers. She potty drained you. She watched you crawl. And when it was time, she held your hands out so you could take your first steps. 
She held the Kleenex for you to blow your nose. She wiped food off your faces. She rocked you back and forth until you fell asleep. She consistently touched you. She told you that she loved you. When you were little, she could say, give me a kiss. I've even heard mothers and grandmothers say the, the, the current expression, come and give me some sugar. And you'd puck her up and you'd even give her a kiss, even if your mouth was full of food and just saliva, just a sloppy kiss. And they would even say, thank you. When you were little, you gave her bear hugs so tight she didn't have to hold on to you. You would just cling on to her as she walked around. It was almost as if she felt a great, great relief, great uh, pressure and great honesty and received this amazing pleasure of joy and, 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 and happiness and love as she received those special hugs. When I speak of bear hugs and hugs in general, you know, I can't help but remember being young and in elementary school. And when I talk about hugs, that part reminds me of my mom. <laughs> you know, growing up, I always w was a mama's boy. <laughs> I really was, especially during uh, grades kindergarten through fifth grade. As I attended my uh, local elementary school, my mom was a crossing guard. As you heard in, you know, recent episodes. She was a crossing guard for her town, our town, and I remember when I was the young boy who always cried when it was time to leave my mom just to go to school. I didn't want to leave her side. As a young boy growing up, I was never embarrassed to hug my mother, not even in public. Forty years later, I still hug my mom in public with love and pride. To me, once my mom gave me that special hug, it was everything just seemed okay. And even though you had to let her go, the feeling would last forever. I can recall being asked by my friends, why do you hug your mom all the time? To me, it was very simple. My mom is my best friend. As I got older, I noticed the world today too often, many kids are embarrassed to show affection to their mother or father. So here's my question to all of you. When was the last time you gave your mother a big hug. When was the last time you gave her a big hug without asking for it? A kiss on the cheek, maybe even a back rub. Or maybe just sat on the couch and spoke with her. You know, mothers have a sympathetic ear. Mothers listen as you pour out your heart. Mothers have the best radar. I think a lot of moms would agree with that. Mothers always know when something's wrong. I've had friends who have lived hundreds of miles away and the mother would call them out of the blue and say, is everything okay? Growing up, I discovered a, a point in every kid's mind or young adult's life when sitting next to your mom in public or hugging her is the most embarrassing thing. Even if they kiss you in front of your friends, it's like a pretty much of a, of a social nightmare. No, 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 mom, don't kiss me, don't kiss me. Remember, the day a child is born, so is a mother. The woman was always there, but it wasn't until the second the little baby boy or girl was born that a mother was born. A mother and her child have a, a special bond that only they can understand. You know, you could fool most of your moms, or most of your friends, I should say, most of the time. But you can't fool mom. She sees right through you and always knows when something's wrong. Some would even say that mother's radar is a mother's intuition. I say it's a mother's love and a bond for her child. A mother will always show you understanding even when you think you don't deserve it. The Bible will tell you that as a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. I can recall back in 2005 when a buddy of mine wanted to go out for the day to the beach. It was a warm, sunny day, you know, beach weather day. As we're getting ready to go out, his mother called and asked if, if he was there. You see, my buddy didn't want to, he, he didn't want to do anything at that moment. He wanted to just go to the beach. 
And as we were getting ready to go out, you know, the mom had, had already reached out to him and asked if, if he was doing anything that day. And he was so quick to say, yeah, I'm busy, mom. And I remember saying to my buddy, I says, you know, why don't you just take her out? Do what you got to do. The beach isn't going anywhere. And as the mom eventually called him and he was still packing as if we're going to the beach, he ignored her. She's talking away. He's packing the bag. And I'm looking at him. I'm like, listen, listen to your mom. She's talking to you. He had shown her no respect. He was still packing his bag and she's talking away about how excited she was if she can go out and take her to, you know, the store and just run errands with her. So I quickly jumped in on the conversation. I was like, hey, how you doing? You know, no, listen, um, yeah, he's going to pick you up in about 30 minutes. Just get ready. He's going to be there. So I hung up the phone and he began to argue with me. He was like, what are you doing, man? This is my day off. I don't want to do anything but go to the beach. I said, listen, man, go to the, go and be with your mom. My mom's not here. She's in New York and we're in Rhode Island. I'm like, listen, go. Go be with your mom. I killed out my mom here right now. I was like, go, have a good day. We, the beach isn't going anywhere. Go for two hours. We could still make it to the beach. So it was so early in the morning and, you know, I, I made him go. I, I told him he had to go. So he went. And after about 15 minutes of arguing, I should say, he finally did decide to go and, and he went and I went back home. And you know what's interesting? <laughs> we never made it to the beach that day. He eventually called me back that evening and told me that he was having so much fun with her, he decided to take her out to dinner. <laughs> you know, the Bible will tell you that children should obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. It tells you to honor your father and mother, that it may go well with you, and that you may live long in the land. It's right out of the Bible. Every year we celebrate Mother's Day. Every year we all go out, we buy flowers, we buy candy, we buy our mother's diamond necklaces. Well, wait a minute. Let me, maybe not diamond necklaces, okay? Uh, let's not go too far. But here's a thought. Why do we have to wait once a year for that Mother's Day to come around for our children and our loved ones to treat their moms like king, uh, you know, queens and princesses? Why do we have to wait for Father's Day to do that? Or Grandparents' Day? Why? Our parents deserve our touch, our affection, our love each and every day. Believe me. It would mean more to them to show that type of commitment of respect, love, and affection each and every day than to shower them once a year with flowers, candy, or gifts. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. So I, 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 this message is for all kids, all teenagers, all young adults. Everywhere out there that listens to this show. The next time your mother asks you the following questions. That I know all of you have often heard. Where have you been? Where are you going? When are you coming home? Did you clean your room? Did you make your bed? Did you do your homework? Did you feed the dog or the cat? Did you take the garbage out? Did you do the dishes? Did you pay your bills? A fellow husbands, by the way, this message applies to us too. Because as a married man myself, I can recall a verse from the Bible, and it's Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22. It says, He who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. Always remember that mothers deserve our attention. Mothers deserve our affection. Mothers should always be told two things. Thank you, and I love you. Ladies, whether you're, you have children of your own or not, you can still have the heart of a mom. The heart of a mom is one that encourages, inspires, invests, 
in the lives of others. It is a heart that nurtures and influences people with love and tenderness. We all have the opportunities to influence and inspire others. You know, we all have the opportunity to dis- deposit uh, words of faith and encouragement into our, each other's hearts. We can be an example of love and faith because there's nothing on earth like the treasure of a mother's heart. To all mothers who have invested so much into their lives of their children, may you be blessed, may you be strengthened and empowered by the Holy Spirit. May you know that the greatest of the gift that you are to this world And let me just conclude by saying this. You know, I leave everyone with what my mom always tells me. You know, my mom always, since I was a kid, says to me, Angel, you know when you were born, all the angels came from heaven. Do you know why? Because you're special. Moms always have a certain thing they say to you. So if there's a thing that your mom says to you or a grandparent that raised you and any of those, remember what they said to you. So... My definition of mother comes out of the Bible because when I hear the word mother, I think of Corinthians chapter 13 and it goes just like this. If you've never heard it, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always hopes, always perseveres. That is what a mother is all about. Parents, honor one another, believe in one another, believe in yourself, believe in God, believe in your parents. Honor them, respect them each and every day. Remember that a mother's smile can brighten any moment. A mother's hugs put joy in all of our days. As we join together and honor each woman every single day, remember those who are smiling down from the heavens and let us remember to honor them and honor our parents and our mothers each and every day. Have faith. Let it begin. I love you, Mom. You're my best friend.